right, y'all. It's your boy Skinny the Pebble. It's your boy Cam Tatum. Hey, man, we got a special one for y'all today, man. Repping Cobb County. Cobb County legend, Atlanta legend, Georgia legend. Man, it speaks for itself, man. Bringing up to the mic, man. Glenn Rice Jr. What's going on, bro? What's going on? I appreciate you for having me. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, my dog, man. Happy to have you, man. I appreciate you coming up here and blessing the show, man. So, okay, you going you gonna to ask me the first question? You got him? I'm going to let you take it away. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, bro. So, when we, when we come on here, the first question we ask, man, and who's the first person, man, to give you some work on the court, man? The person you was like, damn, he gave me that work. That's crazy because I just had that conversation probably uh, not too long ago, but. First person to make you say, man, I got to go back in here and get these. I got to go back in the lab. I, 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 I thought I was like that, but. Bruh say, bruh say, I don't even know that exists. <laughs> bro, I'm talking about even when you was a youngin, all, you know what I'm bro, saying? Bruh say, it like, don't exist, bro. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real, because it. We just had that conversation. Then I don't, I don't really remember nothing like that. Say nobody, it that. ain't even exist. No, nah, I can't say it ain't never exist because maybe somebody can come correct me, but I don't. Uh, so, is it anybody in the city of Atlanta that you looked up to as before you got to high school and things, and you said, "Hey, this is a guy from Atlanta, and I like his game." No, I ain't really watch basketball that much. Yeah, you ain't watch it. Mm -mm. So we, we were talking behind the scenes. You said your first love was football. I ain't gonna say that was my first thing I played. Yeah. First thing you played football. So you would you say you better at football than you are at basketball? Because I mean you get a hell of a basketball oh, player. So <laughs> I think I could have been real good at football. Definitely. What position you play? Defensive end and tight tight end. Okay, okay. Tight end. You a big tight end? Six six seven six 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 seven. Six five. You got hands? The bear. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, man, we're going to dive into, like, let's talk about what high school did you go to coming up in Atlanta? I went to uh, Walton. Walton High School. You Walton. did all four years there? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, let me ask you this. With being there at Walton, why not Willow at that time? Why not Willow? Mm, Walton. Really because Walton, Walton was just, let me think. Cause you know, like, I, no, because we had thought about going to Wheeler. We had even looked at They had like a magnet program or something, mm -hmm. something there. But I just liked it, Watson, because you got to be, I got to, I got to do a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have been able to do with. Gotcha. And it was your, it was your, it was your team. Yeah, it was more so my team. And I All got right. to, I got to do what I needed to do. So that's that's a that's a note right there, man. Because a lot of guys you see they they come together, they want to go to high school, and so sometimes you, you can benefit by just being your own guy and being the man at the school and making their program what it is versus going to a program and trying to fit in and be a part of their system. Right, but in the beginning it was more so probably just because Walton had a better school program because you know, Deuce was uh, more so about the school Ooh. program, so. Mm -hmm. I was going to go there. that school. Yeah, and, 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 I, so. and I'm going to tell you just, you know what I'm saying, just because I follow high school football too, I never heard of Walton being the basketball school until you got there. Until your name, it was football. Because yeah, like you, mm -hmm. you had, I think the running back was Tyron. I think his name was Tyron. The running back ended up going to Alabama around your same time. Gotcha. I think his name was Tyron or something like that. And I used to watch him and things of that nature. And they was like, oh, Walton, Glenn Rice Jr., that he cold. I'm like, for real? Did, did you play with uh, Ryan? Yeah, and that's what I was about to say. And by the time any of that happened, we was already trying to figure it out. And Ryan Harrell ended up coming. So we, I played with him. And we was already good enough to be able to not. There was so no you, need you for us to Ryan Harrell, the yeah. combo guards. Right. Oh, man. I was, I was older than y'all. So I, I was already in school. So I never really got to saw that, see that combination. So can you talk about what how that was? I mean, like. As excited as a player as he was, like. Now, Ryan, Ryan used to, you know, he always scored that ball mm -hmm. real nice and easily, and he finds you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was cool playing with him. It, it, we, would you say it helped you um, be the player that you are? Because having a point guard like that, like you just said, was able to find you, uh, it made your job a little bit easier. 
I would say, yeah. I mean, every 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 teammate that helps you, you know what I mean. Right. To, to be the to, point guard and you being a two three. Uh, I mean, you know me. I be I play point guard a little bit, so mm -hmm. I think it just was good for us to be able to just win and do things like that. And he he more so helped me just trying to learn his handles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying just trying to be able to imitate him and. Patting trying to patting, rocking yeah, folks, that, and that type of stuff. I think I learned more so of that. That's how you develop your game, your handles, and everything. I wouldn't say all of that, but he it was definitely hell. Enhanced, you know what I'm saying? It was I definitely enhanced. wanted because I liked it to compete. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like watching Lorenzo Brown was one of my friends. He had handles. You know what I'm saying? Ryan Harrell, he had handles. So he wanted to be able to just dribble and do mm -hmm. things that they could do. Gotcha. So on that, so now we're in the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. you, you, but before we okay. get to the recruiting process, you're now in your own, and you're your junior and your senior year. You're a Cobb County Player of the Year. Um, your region, if I'm not mistaken, it is region. What's the region you guys played in? Because I was in the there was six A region six A. That was six A. It changes so many times. Region six A Player of the Year. Your junior and your senior year, if I'm not mistaken, right? I think so, yeah. so now you're 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 rated as a four star recruit on Rivals.com, and now you're getting this publicity, and uh, of course you got the name, you know, Junior behind that. On top of that, so people already know you got the the pedigree behind you. So now the recruiting thing starts to hit up heat up as as skin is starting right. to allude to. And and for a lot of guys, you know, what I'm saying they always leave the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul Hewitt, I mean that that old nine class was crazy. Like, I'm looking at Tech, and I remember being excited about Tech because as they, as they signed you. Um, but I want to talk about, one, what made you choose Tech? And, you know, did you feel any pressure of, even though, you know, like you say, mid I heard Michigan offered you later. Did you have any pressure? Did you want to go to Michigan and follow in your pop's footsteps? Or, did you know, did you want to continue that? Or are you just like, hey, I'm doing my own thing. I'm writing my own path. It was, it was more so I just <laughs> grew up in Atlanta. I grew up so close to here mm -hmm. that – Leaving just, I probably didn't feel like I want. I didn't want to leave, and the recruiting class was good, and it was people that you know that I had not necessarily known personally, but I had known from just the basketball circuit. You know what I'm saying? Derek Favor, that move on, you know what I'm saying? We, I seen met him. I would seen him at five star. I played against him so so many times, and it just was. Uh, Shop also, my AAU, right? was Shop. there. Yeah. Also, Lance more, there, more, Lance. more importantly, with my AAU teammate, Camion Housey. Housey, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. he, you know what I mean. So we played AAU for two, for two years. Yeah, we we had played two years of so AAU together. So when he said he was going, it was like This is you know what I'm saying. This is he, this is I I know these people. I ain't, right. I ain't gonna tell you no story. I was excited about that Georgia Tech team. I was too. You know what I'm saying? And then we had a uh, the recruiter Charlton Young. He ended up leaving though. He was going to Maryland. Friend. He ended up basically yeah. doing the switch through with uh, Robert Carter. Uh, I don't remember. You know, I don't remember. Yeah, because but, if I'm not mistaken, he came from Maryland, and Robert Carter was at Tech, and he switched and went to Maryland. And they both was four men. So uh, it was almost the, like a switcheroo the, almost. The coach, Charlton Young. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm completely yeah. off. I'm thinking about yeah, Charles. Yeah, I, said, recruit, I yeah. thought you said Charles. Okay, my apologies. Oh, yeah, that was after. I think that was probably after me because Robert Carter, he had a uh, – yeah, I know who you're talking about. He had uh, – he from here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you you at Tech now as a freshman. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching these games like you dropping some 20s now as a freshman. You probably don't remember. I remember. I think your freshman year, and Cal, I know you probably look. I think you had like five games. You dropped twenty your freshman year. <laughs> like you coming out giving buckets as a, as a freshman, and I'm sitting there like. Uh, I mean, I, I remember in the beginning freshman year, I ain't, I ain't get to play much. Yeah, I didn't. I he was talking about red shirt me, mm -hmm. and I ain't play much and. Eventually, yeah, I ended up getting there. I think I might even start it eventually. You started in the final 11 games of your season, of your freshman season. Right. Eventually, you know what I'm saying? I think I ended up starting. I had a lot of good games. Your sophomore season is when you had your breakout. Is when you started to break out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when you started having you had your six 20-point games. 
Hmm. And then you started really starting to find yourself, trying to start to find your groove, get used to the college play, which a lot of freshmen, I mean, guys do from that freshman to that sophomore, um, especially when they have aspirations to get into the league, they make that jump. So after that, um, what, 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 what can you talk about? What was what was the difference that you saw from your freshman year? Was it just experience, or was it just you know? I think it probably had a lot to do with experience and just we had the role was bigger too, mm. so I had experienced it, and then I ended up having to get shot into that role a little early because we had a lot of guys get drafted like Favors, uh, Ghani Lawa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think maybe even Zach Peacock, or you know what I'm saying? Just a lot of seniors maybe had left, or and I then, don't remember. So. And then Shump left after my sophomore, so sophomore year. After your sophomore mm-hmm. year. So so now after that, you have a good you have a good sophomore campaign. Kind of run into a little bit of trouble there. And uh, so now you got to start, you know, redirecting your path. So now it's, you know, okay, now I'm trying to become a pro. Um, so, after then, I still did my junior. I did my junior with the new coach. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Paul got, uh, yeah, Paul Gregory. got out. Yeah, Brian Gregory. Brian Gregory. Okay. Can you talk about that experience with him as a coach? Because uh, Paul Hewitt, you know, obviously they're two totally different. Uh, I was recruited by Paul Hewitt, so I don't right. really know much about Paul Gre- Brian Gregory, but I do know a little bit about Hewitt. Uh, so Brian Gregory is just, I mean, you know, how, how, how that is, just different, just mm-hmm. new. So now you gotta learn something completely different, completely new, and different and implementing their system exactly. And you might not have been his guy, or, or his you know what I mean, or so. whatever they, you know, whatever it might be. And I started off pretty good, and eventually ended up just not being on the team anymore. Mm-hmm. So then now you gotta go a different route. Now you're talking about going through the professional ranks and stuff like that. Um, you hire an agent. Uh, no, nah, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Who do, who do you who are you talking to at this point? Who are you consulting? Are you consulting Big Glenn? You talking to yeah. your mom? You talking to your brothers? Who do you, who are you talking to? Uh, my point? dad, my dad for 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 a majority of the time, you know what I'm saying? Or and talking to maybe uh, to his old agent, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. My mom, of course, I'm still talking to the college people because I'm still taking visits and stuff because you transfer. You still, yeah, you still got, ob- got a red shirt in year too. Ob- that's the obvious thing that you would think uh, that I'm supposed to do so I'm thinking about that and where I might want to transfer to in red shirt and nothing really made sense. So, no, nah, not the I didn't really want to sit out the whole year. Yes, you're not playing. That, that we ain't had a transfer game. portal like we have in the just to be happy with the situation and be like, you know what, I'm going, I'm leaving. Let me go somewhere else. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Could you know. imagine if we had a transfer portal now? I didn't even know they did it now. Oh, oh man. man, listen, bro, you can put your name in a little yeah, like a hat thing, like a little hat. Yeah. And and teams and go be like, and, and the team be like, in. oh snap. Glenn Rice Jr. is available. He is leaving Georgia Tech. Ooh. And you, you don't have to sit out either. And you ain't gotta and you ain't gotta go to a lower classification. See, free agency for college. Free agency for college. Yeah. So it's yeah. crazy, yeah. absolutely. So, so now at this point, do you you hire an agent? I don't hire an agent until after the D League. After the D League. So how you end up in the D League? So how, based on your decision, we know what your decision is, but they may uh, not know. So. I decided to go to D League, and I just uh, put my. You put your name in, like, you had to sign, you know, yeah. sign you gotta a paper, a paperwork, right. all that type of stuff. Go ahead and put your name in the in the little draft because mm-hmm. you. You the clan, you let them know. Yeah, you so yeah. you don't get to just pick whatever team unless you maybe go sign. I don't know how it worked exactly, but I put my name in a draft, mm-hmm. and somebody had drafted me out of the um, out of the pool. Okay. Now, what team drafted you? Which one? What team gave you shot in the D League? Rio Grande. Rio Grande. Rio Grande. Yeah. What do you do in Rio Grande? Ted Adam Lowe. Out there. <laughs> in, the, in the beginning, I didn't do nothing. That was the that was the hard that was the hard it part. About, it ain't about what you do; it's how you finish, man. So it was a rough start coming D League. Real. Well, 
This ain't a rough for me. Okay. <laughs> now, what made it rough? What was the experience? Because, you know, you're used to playing. And then I get there, and I barely made a team. And the thing, I barely made, I barely made a team only because somebody ended up quitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they ended up putting me on the team. But I was on, uh, what is, what's it called? Not injury reserve, but like, I was on the inactive Workers' list. comp. I was on the workers' comp, too. That's what they do back then when they give you a little fake injury. Just to keep you on the team so you don't go out into the pool or nothing like that. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that yeah. Exactly. Shout out to the D League for that little trick. <laughs> you know, we all. Hey, man, you know, just real fast, you know, I was having a conversation with some guys, man. They talking about teams don't do stuff. I'm like, they find every loophole. Man, they going to find a loophole. They're they going to find you. That's how they got me, and it made it sound good, too, for me. <laughs> like, they was like, man, we really like you. We really don't want you to go nowhere. So we want to keep you in the team, man. So you got to. Injury, <laughs> allegedly. Let me let me stop that. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. So, so now you just watching. You at the top, and then now you at the bottom <laughs> no, in basketball. Now you watching. I was happy at first because I'm thinking I'm gonna make the money. You know, I was working the world. I wasn't making no money in college, so I get to make something. But you don't get to make nothing here. You know what I'm saying? Because you inactive. And 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 you technically red shirt, which you didn't want to do. Basically, so I just get to wait. I'm just there waiting. And finally, I want to say finally, I think, I don't know, somebody got caught up, somebody got hurt, and ended up getting a big actor. But, like, you know, in the beginning, I had told them, I think I'd rather just leave to be an actor. And, you know, Coach, had, like Cam say, no, we really want you. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you should leave. It's a great mm -hmm. opportunity. You're selling it. I mean, I, yeah, he saw it. It was a good thing, though, too, huh? So, it worked out. It yeah, worked out. out because it worked I out. I want to say he, was just, average, he wasn't selling no you average 25, You averaged 25, nine and a half rebounds and 4.3 assists and two blocks and two steals a game mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Yeah. So, coming out. No, playing. no, no. I'm sorry. Not playing. <laughs> These stats, bro. In the so including averaging 29, 11 and a half, four assists, three steals, three and a half blocks in the D League finals, bro. That's like, hold <laughs> on, and they had to think about playing you, and they had to think about playing you at first. So now, <laughs> what is like, I, I got to ask because as a player that's been in that in that situation, well, not necessarily in that situation in the D League, what are these teams, what are they saying to you now? Like right now, if you can remember, I'm talking about from, from that. I posted all that. What are they? What are they saying to you now? What is what is the talk now? The, the talk was you just sat here and just said that you had to wait till somebody get injured or somebody got called up to the point where you led this team. I don't know who else had better numbers on that team. I can't really see nobody else having better numbers, mm -hmm. but you literally are the focal point in leading this D League team to a championship as a rookie. That's rookie. I don't care what type of League you're in as a rookie at any league that you're in, dog, that's very impressive. So now what is the talk now? Uh, then, you know, now just try to get to the draft. And try get to get to the draft. So you ended up you end up getting drafted. You get drafted by Philly and then the Wizards and then you get uh, it's a draft day trade with the Wizards. Yeah. So you're there with the Wizards and I'm looking, I, I don't know if I, I, I am actually in the in the D League myself at this point, and I am looking back. My perspective is like, oh man, this man really did it. It's possible. Like now, I'm about to be next because I'm in the D League trying to be like, man, I'm I, I don't I already put my name in the draft, so I knew I wasn't going to get drafted based off of that. But you really showed that because at that point in time, there was a stigma in the D League that if you got in the D League, man, you were pretty much stuck. And you wasn't getting out. Dog, you came in there and dominated. And there's been guys who dominated the D-League, played well, been D-League all-time leading scorer. I, my teammate, Ronaldo Major, shout out to Ronaldo Major. He was a nine-year vet, all-time leading scorer in the D-League, and, and it was hard for him to get calls up. You came in and did that and got drafted off of that. Like, yeah, You know, I got to see some of that later. You know what I'm saying? After I got drafted, I think it was just because uh, like you, like we had said, the route that I had took, mm -hmm. that I was the only person that I put up their numbers, but be able to be drafted. You know what I'm saying? Still, mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm still young. I'm still. That was just my senior year of college, basically. Right, right. So you still had a lot of that, a lot to prove. You know, everybody. A lot of people don't know if they haven't played against you. You a dog. So it's like if you ain't coming with that, I'm gonna compete and try to bust you, bust your ass every time. You gonna you gonna get the worst of it. Yeah, I always compete. You always gonna compete. All right, that's one thing I know. I was telling the guys behind the scenes. I was like, man, we playing pickup ball. I'll for sure. You for me, you are gonna be a number one and number two pick just because. My whole thing with hooping is off competing. I know you're going to compete too. So, you got your stand. You do two years. You do two years with Washington. What was that? So, yeah. you're getting drafted, man. So, now, coming from the city, you hear your name called. What is it like to hear your name called on draft day, man? What is like? What is that feeling? Is it is it a feeling? Is it a euphoria? Like, or are you like, damn, like you get emotional, man? Or was it like, oh, all this hard work? Or was it a chip on your shoulder? Like, y'all wait to the second round. I just did twenty nine against pros, <laughs> and y'all want to take me second round? Or was it like, all right, good, we here? <laughs> you know, I ain't. I don't. I already left. Went upstairs. I don't, I don't think I. They had to call me so I could run down there and go see it. But in the beginning, like you said, I just was. I'm, man, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I've been watching this for so long. It's supposed to be somebody's supposed to call my name. Somebody's supposed to be been called my name. Like, please. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes you know what I'm watch. I'm hungry. Please. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm begging it. You know what I'm saying? Somebody at least. So. Because I can go. Y'all see what I can do. I, you know what I mean? You know, of course, you always think so. But then, uh, of course, once you do see it, mm. then all of that, all of that stiff, all of that, you know what I'm saying? Call me, call me, call me. I can't believe you ain't call me. All of that went away because. You can't call. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Everybody else emotionally. So, it was a good feeling. So, now you up there in Philly. You got John Wall. You got Bill. Mm-hmm. Got all these guys. So, now. You back at the bottom again. Supporter right. there too? Yep. Yep. Supporter there too. That was my only concern. Was not that I knew I felt like you were better than Porter, but just you know how the politics but I think they just took him with the number four pick maybe just the year before or something like that. Yeah, I think it was number three, the same year though. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. we're the same we the same class. And so in Washington, you stepping in you the rook. How did, what's the experience? Mm-hmm. That's what I think of it. it was, it was mm. So was it come because I mean because Washington the, the, the career part of Washington is like they had other guys. And I'm pretty sure you was getting them guys work in practice. I'm pretty sure you going at them. You going at their neck. I mean you coming off 29-11 D league. And was there a lot of politics up in Washington that prevented your career from really flourishing up there? I mean, I probably, I think it was just, we had a lot of good guys. It was just older. Uh, you just get like, it done. Yeah, we got drafted higher. It was good, better than good enough. One more question. I know Cam got some good. The first thing you bought that first check, man, that check hit. First thing you did. <laughs> okay, I did nothing for real. I'm gonna get in my apartment so I can have somewhere to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then go, then go stupid with it or nothing. Mm-hmm. So now you transition. So you, you think two years off after? The D- no, you don't. No, I follow you a little bit. This is when I. This is when I personally start to come into. Knowing about Glenn Rice and start following him, you do some stints in Mexico. Mm-hmm. You get it out the mud, like for real, for real. Like, cause people don't really know what it's like playing in Mexico. Like, if you when you go from a Washington Wizards NBA draft pick to Mexico, and this is no disrespect to anybody that's playing in Mexico, <laughs> no disrespect, respectfully. When you go from that to that, it's like, oh, yeah, he done. He over with. And I think he went to Mexico like two two or three times, if I'm not mistaken. 
Kilgore's and I'm like, what is he? In the back of my mind, I'm like, what in the world is he doing? Like, bro, you got an NBA tag. Why are you going to Mexico? Why aren't you going here? Going here, X, Y, Z. So then you pop up in the Philippines because you are giving work per usual in Mexico. Right. Like you are you doing your thing. Like, so you go to the Philippines. I, as a player myself, I've dreamt to go play in the Philippines. Mm. Because I've heard, obviously, the money is great. <laughs> yeah, the Philippines was nice. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you get all of it in the Philippines, or did they still owe you when you were out? No, the Philippines did what? Right. That's the thing about the Philippines. They ain't going to play about their money. Anything Asia-related, they're not playing about their bread. Anything Asia-related. You so, sign for it, you get it. <laughs> One thing that I can't say is a lot of overseas dudes be lying about their money. But if they play in Asia... If they say they're getting it, they got it. That's for sure. So, so you go to play there. I heard the Philippines basketball. I heard it. What is, it is what it is as far as, like, you know, short short seasons and you get to they give you the ball. You get to be the man. You get to shoot 30 times a game. Yeah. All of that. We'll talk about that experience. How did, that was your first ex, – well, that's your second experience overseas. But now you're in, like, big-time basketball. Now you're starting to see, like, oh, okay, this is different than <laughs> Mexico I was just playing in. Well, yeah, you know, you know, that's what everybody would say. But basketball almost was, I think, probably was better in Mexico almost. Really? Mm. Was, yeah, because probably because you got basically five Americans. You know what I'm saying? Four or five Americans. Because it's so close, you ain't really going over the water. You at home, right? You know what I'm saying? Because you can have three or four Americans. Yeah. And yeah. then you got a Mexican American who been basically American, American. You know what I'm saying? Probably, His whole yeah. life, or so it's like. These are the people that's coming to, to, you know what I'm saying, to the runs and pick up that we coming into. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's Everybody like, it's kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of more so. You at home, basically. It's kind of more so. A ba- yeah. Basketball-wise, it was different. But you playing basketball, you passing, you shooting, you picking, rolling, you doing this, that, and that. And then in the Philippines, it just was different because, like you said, you just, your role is just so much bigger. Mm-hmm. Like, it ain't. You here. They don't they, care about all that. You like a real life brand over there to these people. Like yeah, now, yeah. you like okay, yeah. All that passing and all that. You know what I'm saying? Win the game by scoring forty. You know what I'm saying? Is what they want you to do. Go off. Do what you got to do, man. Because <laughs> my first game, I don't think I did it. I didn't score that much. I had thought I had played decent, but I just hadn't scored it much. Probably like twenty three, twenty five. A good, decent game. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? We did all right, right? <laughs> nah, I ain't think so. So you you here to let you drop from 50s. That's what you here to do. Do we just, you know what I'm saying? Do, do what you here for. To be the man off the bat. This is what we paying you. These amount of so money. That was kind of that was different. Gotcha. So after that, you uh, you got to have a situation there and uh, – Sounds like you have something going on with, the, with somebody on the court. Was that a teammate? Was it somebody else on the court or another player? No, no, that was somebody on the other team, basically. And he's just, you know, overseas, they always got somebody, I guess, basically just come in and be real and, physical. And be that guy. You got to yeah. be the goon. What's, what's, who is the goon. Tom, Tom Chaney? Be the yeah, goon. You got to have your goon. goon. Don't act like we don't know about him. Oh, yeah. your goons. Mm-hmm. And they just, I think they basically ejected me for that. To do disrespect. Because if somebody come up to and disrespect you, then you supposed to be as a professional. You're just supposed to be allowed to tolerate that and take that. Yeah, for the most part. And yeah. that's not, it's just, as a man, you're simply not going to take that. Understandable. Yeah, he did, you know, he did a lot of flopping. Mm-hmm. So, the next thing, you go to Israel, hop a well. How you like? How's how's life in Israel? It was cool, cool. And, and uh, of course, now, like I said before, since ever since then, I'm I, I now you're on my radar now, because now I, as a basketball player, um, even as me being active as a professional, when I see other players that I think is is good, I, I pay attention to. Especially now, I think we were competing against each other in the runs, with, at Wallace Breaker runs. and Again, now I'm with my boy Kenny all the time, so he's talking about you. Um, so you're in Hopperwell, and you're, and you're tearing it up. I think you end up being uh, the Israel Cup 
you end up running the Israel's Fate Cup there, yes, and then you're the MVP, or you win the, the, the scoring title in Israel that year. Um, I didn't get the finish. You didn't get the finish. But I think because of you were tearing it up so quickly, I mean, you were tearing it up the way that you were, nobody was going to catch you where you were scoring at anyway. Um, but why didn't you? What, what, what happened? What, what, what can you talk about? Um, well, I know what happened. Um, the situation that happened, but is, is there anything that you would like to clear up? Because the way that it's perceived is just like, you was the troublemaker. You was the, the troublemaker. Instigator. Like, you was the instigator in it. Like, you was the guy that's just kind of like, all right, my team just win or lost. We just had, I just had 25. Now I'm just going to go in here and just go crazy on somebody. I mean, no, I do it. I was a So, we were my team. Like, when, when, what? When, Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Something that. Great locker room. If you in a, if you in a locker, if you play basketball in a very, very competitive level, you're going to have all the cases. So you're not going to like your teammates in your locker room. That that yeah, just ain't sometimes. that just ain't it. And every time, and even overseas. And even if you do like the person. You're still going to You're still going to have yeah. disagreements. You're going to disagree. Just sometimes. Especially in a, if, if you're dealing with two alphas. You know what I'm saying? If you're dealing with two alphas, you're going to have disagreements, especially in the basketball game, in the basketball world. Um, so that if, if I'm not mistaken, we kind of talked about it. The guy was upset with you, and the name doesn't even matter. But he was upset with you because he wasn't. He felt like he wasn't getting enough touches. Mind you, you were averaging, I mean, up upwards of the five and six six assists a game, four point seven to be exact. So you're obviously getting a, you're obviously passing the ball while you're averaging twenty four a game. So if you're averaging twenty four and five assists a game, and on top of that. They brought you there to score. To score. Uh, to be the man. For guys who don't know that, that this is my job, this is what I'm here for. So why are you, you say he was clapping his hands, like, hey, man, pass the ball, this, 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 getting real kind of like disrespectful. How I know how some teammates could do. So you're in the locker room or you're walking out the game, you're in the locker room and he does. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't mean, know. What an altercation. You just does he what what is, does he say something to get under your skin? Does he say like um like besides him just saying pass the ball, he's like, man, pass the fucking ball or you man, I ain't you know how some guys get to where they start talking crazy and they be like, Man, you a ass nigga, man, you a whole oh, ass nigga, that type of stuff, yada yada yada, and he's like, Hold on now. Because some guys feel like you can talk to somebody like that. And knowing because with basketball players is just talking, they ain't really finna do nothing. But you really know that with some people in some of this basketball world is really, really like ain't gonna tolerate no disrespect. No disrespect like that. It was one of those type of situations. It's like, bro, you're not gonna disrespect me, bro. Point blank, period. I don't, I don't care about anything. I'm a man first. Well, if you got a problem with me, you can address me in, in, in the right way. But I ain't finna be none of these bitch ass niggas and. Uh, you are and all that type. Of, I'm not gonna be that. You know, <laughs> you know me. That's one thing, see, I ain't gonna lie, man. That's one thing I I, I can I, I can commend <laughs> about you with any of these situations, bro. Is that and I guess that's why this makes this topic so interesting because any of this stuff that has that that, that they have you talking about, you ain't never tried to throw nobody under throw the nobody bus. under the bus. You ain't never you tried to took, even talk about took. it. You just took it and just kind of been like, hey man, you know, I was a part of it. This was this was me. Like I set my responsibility. Um, so my I name. just know you personally now to the point where it's like I know you ain't just really just walking by somebody and just <laughs> uppercutting them, bro. Like I know that ain't. <laughs> That ain't that ain't you. <laughs> no, no. But but I think because what happened is they starting to paint because they starting to paint the picture against you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Philippines situation, sure. and now you in Israel. No, and, definitely, definitely, they definitely gonna paint a picture that ain't good, and you know it ain't always 100 percent true. What but, it is, but, but it's easy, but it's easy to pin it on you because you the star. Yeah, that's, and you just kind of like it did come it did come with it with the territory. To come, I ain't busy. 
ain't nobody 100% perfect, no way. So I most of the sometimes got a little bit to do with some of these, but I don't. They're not normally as big as. As they try they to make, make it seem. Like, it's just that. It, but it's because it's you. It's because it's it, you. It gotta be. It's gonna be big because yeah. it's you. Right. Got you. Got you. So you do. So you go back to Mexico for another two, another year. And uh, you even do the you even do Brazil not Brazil you do Dominican Republic. How was that? Uh, How's DR man? Good. I, I don't remember. I have been there a couple of times. Okay. But I think the other time I was there with um with G. Oh, uh, Big Gerard, G. Yeah, Big Gerard, G. Okay. Gerard. Yeah, he had uh, he had got the finals MVP. We ended up winning the championship down there. Okay. Okay. So pretty much everywhere you go, you win. You win the championship. Like, you're going to win, you're going to score buckets, you're going to win, or you're going to be in the contention to win. For the most part. For the most part. So, it's like, everything that y'all will try to say, you know what I'm saying, it don't really be what it is. And I also win. But what more what, what do y'all want? You know, that's how we look at it from a basketball perspective. You know what I'm saying? When you, that's what y'all want to do, win. Just win game. So, after your stints in Central and South America... You now come back up to you back in Australia, New Zealand, yeah, New right. Zealand, um, in the Australian league. That's one of the right. top leagues now in the whole world. Now you just seen Lamelo Ball getting drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a couple of Josh Children's. I think was the one first guy that made it real hot by leaving the NBA and going on, to okay. play over there. Okay, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, I had a teammate Scotty Hobson play there. I think was your teammate there during that time in New Zealand. Uh, so when you Resurfaced back on there, I was like, okay. And I think I've been training with you over, like I said, again, at, yeah, at Wallace. So we had been really uh, in communication. And I was like, okay, you're going to go over there and, and tear it up. And that's exactly what you did. But you got into another situation. Right. And, again, another situation where it just looked like, all right, because of who it is, and I ain't going to lie, from me, when the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the news first hit, it was like, for me, I was, like I said, now I'm with you. Now I'm taking you, dropping you off places. We ride in the car, and I'm like, bro, the bro just misunderstood. And so now I see it, and now you're going over there, and you do that, and I'm like, well, God dang, bro, mm -hmm. like, I just was with him, and I know he got it together. Like, this ain't him. It's like, this him. really, it's really, it's not him. I know this not him. But then the news outlets is like, nah, Man, bro, just went into a bar and just <laughs> got into a fight in a brawl, and you know what I'm saying? It got to a fight in the brawl again. We talked a little bit behind the scenes, and it was now that I got to understand. This is my first time today hearing more about it. We played a video game together all the time, and we we haven't talked about this. It. The first time we've ever talked about it. Long story short, you say because we know now that you're a guy that don't like to talk about it. Some guy who was a Name doesn't even matter. I don't even know the guy's name. Played another sport out there. There might have been some jealousy. He might have been drunk. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly, whatever the case is. The police come and tell you what happened. You say, I failed. So you don't even tell the police what happened because that's who you are. You're like, man, I don't, nothing that, whatever, whatever happens between me and that person, and got nobody else is yeah. there. It really matters. I mean, you got to think, just when you talk about like where we come from, you ain't trying to put the law in anything. Absolutely. What happened on the streets or what happened in the locker room, that's where it happened at. If you you win, I win, whoever, we can move past. That's where we stay at. You know what I'm saying? You messing up for money when you start bringing in the police. And, I mean, you messing up my life now. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what, they going to paint me to be the bad guy. They don't know you all because over the world. Because of what my reputation has been, even mm -hmm. though the reputation that I've had ain't necessarily accurate to what the stories are reporting. So we don't know now. We know how people, we, it's 2019, and we live in a world where everybody tries to go viral. Who's to say that now you just signed to this New Zealand Breakers, you are Glenn Rice Jr., you are a former NBA draft pick. Who's to say that this guy from Australia who is whatever on the whatever other sports team ain't looking for some clout, ain't looking for the, you know to go viral or something like that. Who's to, who's to say that? Because we live in a time to where these people really do that. And in a sense, I think something comes out to where they present some video footage that actually 
works in your favor. It clears your name. That clears your name. And then you're able to come back and drop 27 and pop up all over Swiss culture after a suspension that they feel like is completely your fault. And everybody's like, well, how is he able to just have the mindset to come back from all that and they just and just and just kill and just still be the dog? Well, for one, a lot of people might not know, like, well, shit, I ain't had nothing to do with it. So I'm gonna come right back up to my job. And I'm finna do what I'm supposed to do, who play, because, you know what I'm saying? I know my involvement in it, and I'm back on the court for a reason. Like, damn, just, you know, that's about it anytime. It's just, even if you had something to do with it, you just... You keep it moving. It's basketball. This is relaxing. This is something you get to do, you know what I'm saying? That's just where you get to take your mind off of everything anyway. And it's just, it's fun to actually play this sport. You know what I'm saying? When you get to play and you actually have the ball and you actually get to play and you in a role that you enjoy. So it's the best part that's always gonna be the easy part. It's everything off the court that make it different. It's gonna be anything everything on and off the court that's other than the best part. You seem like you're able to just tune that out though. Like like some people it just it's hard for them. It, it affects them. But you gotta you got the ability to not just tune it out but just come out and like <laughs> still be you and dominate. Like, I mean, during the basketball game, it's shit. You in the ball. You in like, the, the, like, yeah. like meditate. Yeah. Because gotcha. that is the same. For you, that's you the haven. Gotta, you don't got to do nothing else at that point in time. For no least, worries. An hour and a half. All you got to do is worry about one thing. And it's just winning and playing basketball. So the court, that 94 feet of space, that's your, that's your haven right there. That's what I'm with. Yeah. For the, the other thing is. Or really anything, activities like that is just it's relaxing. Relax and get your mind off of it. So what is uh so sorry you still hooping? I know you you had a stint in Saudi Arabia and uh, and Juventus. So it's all during the twenty twenty times, and also it's been a real, a real tricky time during this COVID. So I know that's really been a, a huge effect on the, on a lot of people. But are you still active? Are you still trying to go back overseas? Are you still trying to? Get back in the league. What 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 are your where you stand at right now? Uh, our options, you know, open now. Just mm -hmm. now playing, playing basketball when 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 it comes around when it makes sense. Yeah. So, Glenn Rice is a free agent. So whoever teams are seeing this, I hope these reach the right teams and actually hopes to put a light on some of the things that might be concerning you guys or the teams or whatever. Um, just to see that you know, obviously that there's been some misunderstandings in a lot of, in a lot of cases. So uh, you know, he's obviously you still healthy, you still good, no major injuries, nothing like that. You ready to go? You still gonna be the same? I'm come off a of playing, give you 25 and seven, eight, ten that's, rebounds a game. You know, that's always gonna be the easy part for sure. A lot of basketball, and a lot of college. So, so I'm gonna so ask you this: going going back basketball, who's your goat? Who's your goat? My goat is Trace McGrady. Trace McGrady? I respect that. That's fine. Hey, bro. I respect He's that. Still the goat. Bro. Hey, bro. Listen. That. Hey, I respect I, that. I respect it's, that. It's the goat. It's McGrady the goat. was a dog, bro. Trace McGrady was a dog. Right. We're going to talk about Pierre just at their best. You just wake up and just do it. At their best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all just always going to give because it. It's hard to go ahead. You're not talking about longevity. When y'all talk about Jordan no. and LeBron, everybody always say, well, Jordan his best yeah. was better than, you know what I'm saying, LeBron just because he had long jabs. Okay, well, I'm going to get real small just because McGrady got hurt. I'm going to get real small. During his time. Trace McGrady was that dog. I'm going to get real small. Get real small, some besides not like McGrady. McGrady. When you go to Washington, is there a guy, who, who are you most excited to see up close and personal or compete against? Was it a guy like you just like, I can't wait to see him or be on the court and share this court with him. Was any of those guys? Did you have any of that? No, but one, because I don't really watch basketball, and two, because the guys was people that I never really got to see. Play. Like Bradley Beal was younger than me, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't get to know much. Bradley. You know what I'm saying? Until I seen him in person, you know what I mean? John Wild. The same year, so I already, you know, what I'm saying I already been, you know, what I'm saying I already been excited about you. I already before, you know, what I'm saying that. 
Damn, oh, now you get to play with him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I see you at LeBron camp, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, hey, man, this is John Wild. I read him once or twice. Now you just John Wild. They're peers now. Them your guy. Them just your peers. Yeah. We, we compete. That's all anybody else. Yeah. That wasn't. Because those were the two franchise guys, right? From what right. I know. So all the places you'd have been in the world, what was your favorite? <laughs> As in, living wise, we just, just off the court, just living. That's gonna be hard. I'm guessing it's Saudi Arabia. I'm guessing it's Saudi Arabia. It depends on what depends on what city he was in Israel, man. No, but you know, I really like the Mexico. Mm-hmm. I really like the Mexico. And I like America too. <laughs> I like Miami. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time in Miami. I do like that. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. The Philippines, not everything was nice for what they were nice for. Gotcha. The Philippines were nice. I say, who was the best player? Did you watch Vincent Banks or did you watch Lou Will? Who are you taking? You don't know who Vincent Banks is? Oh, my <sighs> God. Man. Hey, bro. <laughs> One more time just for it. Can we anybody Vincent know Banks Vincent show, Banks, man? We man, gotta get. You, know, you, you ever heard that name before? Oh, hey, bro. I, I, I will tell you, hands down. And this is no disrespect for the people that came after, disrespect it. Or, or before, bro. Best basketball player I've ever seen. My own two eyes. Disrespect it. No disrespect to you. Yeah. Disrespect. Hey, man. It's too late. Hey, listen. Like, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. Hey, listen. I don't want to say. Hey, bro. It is what it is. All right, He's on the list, or that list that they have of the top 30 over the last decade, which was made in 2013. Lou Will was number one, and Vincent Banks was number four on that list. The White House was number two. Number two. And I think somebody else was number three. And I think a lot of that has to do with post high school career. Yeah. Glenn. That's no stop because Lou Williams did his shit. I mean, I'm not saying nothing. Lou, Lou. Lou tore it up in high school. Lou, Lou, Lou tore it up. Average 30. I, 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 I ain't not. Lou better stay in high school. Lou Will Vincent, probably, Vincent, all, probably Vincent, four years, right? I think Vincent Banks started starting as a sophomore, right? Lou Vincent Banks good. putting up 60s in an eight minute clock. And we ain't talking about 60s layup, bro, because shoot. This ain't, this ain't no, like, about hold 60. On. This is hold 60. Hold on, hold on. So, so, is, so is Humphrey. Yeah, but I'm about to just show you it ain't it ain't that he don't have. Point. You got a good point there. Yeah, like bro, just it was in, anywhere on the floor. Like man, the region champ, we we beat them at, at Tucker. So the first time we played them, you know, Cole Hart would come up to us and say, "Hey, this guy is the number one guy in the state of Georgia." What year was it? That's oh, that's like oh two oh three right there. Oh, you know what I'm saying? And so we go to South Carolina, they beat us by three. We was like, we didn't see anything. He had we hit him to twenty one, like. So we come to, he come to Tucker, and um, we damn near get to fighting on the stage. So we beat them. We had them in five. So he had five. He had five fouls, four fouls, going into the fourth quarter. We had them three points. But he had twenty one in the fourth. He had six threes and three free throws, and missed the game, winning three and right, he rammed out. So we go to North Springs for the region championship. We ready, you know what I'm saying? We about to play for the region. So they running a the full corner. So the point guard hit it to him. He goes to our coach and say, because we running a three two. He say, This what y'all gonna do tonight. He didn't even wait for us to break the zone. He wasn't trying to hold the ball. He took one dribble, fired that bitch. Woo! He said, You better come with another game plan. The next play. Woo! I mean, he's shooting it down. He damn near shooting it from half coat. He had 32 at halftime. Six minutes to go in the third quarter, he had 42. He told the coach to take him out the game. Bro was just a walk in. Like he was hitting fifty. He was hitting fifties and sixties like it wasn't nothing. Hey, so um man, we also uh, also looked up, man, looking up your profile before you came in here. I saw you had a little stint on the housewives. The housewives. <laughs> and down in it's Miami. So, down in Miami. In Miami. Miami. Yo, yeah. So uh you know, that's like kind of guess for what I looked at it from the outside looking in. Let's say you was tapping into your acting skills. 
Uh, man, this is just the entertainment value of the part, man, uh, of the show. Just, just want to know what, what was your involvement in that? How did you get? How, how, how did you get, you get involved in the man. Housewives? Man? My auntie on that show. Okay, so for those that don't know, who's your auntie? For those that don't know, uh, Tammy. Okay. I except for, and I don't really, I don't know, cause I don't really watch the Housewives like that. Sure. So. <laughs> I'm saying you're a grown man. Okay, so your aunt is on there. Okay, how was so how was that, man? Like it was uh just was what it was, it was just okay. Say <laughs> Reggie what? You had a did, <laughs> did So you plan on going back on the house wide man, making another appearance on there, man? Yeah. Hey right, man, you get on there a little bit, man, before you go back overseas, man, get on the house wide. Hey man. Hey bro. I'll go say, man, you know, bring your boy skin with you, man. Hey, listen. Hey, listen, y'all go to man. I'm taking my shirt off, dog. They got they gotta see the pebble, dog. <laughs> they gotta see the pebble, bro. Hey, you say, man, we got Cam, we got King, we got Harry, and we got skin in there, man. We know we with you, bro. Hey man, because listen, I think this podcast about to take off, dog. So I really think that we can, you know what I'm saying, we can get shit. Because what, what we have, we started on Clubhouse. We can even get a spinoff, man. We can get the real faithful black oh, man, man of Atlanta. I'm just showing any of these guns, dog. Yeah, he's showing those guns. Yeah. Hey, they ain't the, 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 the biggest, but they ain't the biggest. This is what Ken, uh, this is what Skinny and I, or more so what Skinny has started online on Clubhouse, oh, the man. faithful black man of America. So yeah. we can go to Atlanta, excuse yeah. me, the faithful yeah. black man of Atlanta. No, so, you know what I'm saying? We can get a spinoff, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah we, you know, never cheat. you know, so yeah. t- t- tell auntie, uh, hey, I tell need the a little network. Ever. <laughs> he gonna put the graphics with that shit. Never <laughs> cheat. Never. LeVar Ball never lost, and I have never cheated. Ha, <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, man. All right, but back 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 to the hoop thing. Um, as we get ready to wrap this thing up, man. Um, so you say you still hooping? Is there anything ain't anything else outside of hoop that you're doing, or you just really really just locked in? Uh, or is it? Can you give me a, a day in the life of Glenn Rice Jr. Call of Duty, you know, basketball. Know that's for sure. you know, Seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning. I gotta lock in because that's my hours. That's when I wake up. Okay. And then yeah, other than that. I'm trying to free out basketball things and maybe something else is just investing. You know, you're still young, man. You're still yeah. young. You still got a lot of a lot of years left in you to hoop, man. I, like I said earlier, man, you, you're a dog. You know what I'm saying? Sure, you can really go. Uh, I know any team would be, you know what I'm saying, lucky to have you. You know what I'm saying? Blessed to have you for that matter. Absolutely. So, um, you said one more thing, too, man. And, you know, because we got a lot of young kids that want to be that 1%. You know what I'm saying? Really less than 1% of just getting drafted and being professional, whether it's in the NBA, overseas, things like that. Is there anything on your path, man, that you'll say to the young kids, man, just really just a lookout for or things of that nature, man, or certain stuff that you felt like you probably would take or you probably would do differently if you had to do it over again or if you was talking to your younger self, anything you would tell your 16, 17-year-old self? Uh, mm, I mean... You know, just certain certain things you gotta look out for. And I think everybody just gotta learn to do things the way they will. But I will tell them some things that that I did that that they'd probably help you more so. Like going to the gym often. You know, if you really want to do that, I used to go to the. I used to go in high school. I used to go before school started. You know what I mean? I work out. I work before. Switch your shots up. Every you know every day before school. You know what I mean? Maybe one other person. And shower there, and that's it. I think you really want to do something. You got to work. You got to put in the work. I will. Got to put in the work. Gotta Can't wake up like this, man. For sure, man. Well, Glenn, man, again, dog. Definitely want to thank you for coming on here. Appreciate you for having me. Blessing us, blessing our show, man. Blessing the room, man. With your presence, dog. With your with your gems, with your stories, man. Absolutely. I think uh, a lot of people are gonna be able to take something away from this, and uh, hopefully they'll get a different uh, perspective on. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, you know what I'm saying, who Glenn Rice is. And that's what we wanted this thing to really be, man. So, appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you, my boy. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. Again, man, I'd like to thank you guys again for tuning in to the 94 Feet Podcast, man. Uh, you can click the, link, t- t- click the links in the bio on YouTube, man. Uh, special shout out to our guy, 
Tony P. Tony P. Does, does stuff. Does stuff, man. Follow him on the Instagram, man. Hey. Got to make all the magic happen for Shout out to my boy stuff. King, too. Hey, we got to throw my boy King in there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Shout out to my boy King for making all this happen, man. For sure, for sure. I think it's easy. Hey, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pop in here, man. Go ahead. Pop in here, King. Pop in. Hey, pop in front of the camera. Real fast. We had King on it as a hey. guest, man. King is like the official, is the official family of the 94 P podcast, man. He's been with us since day one. Day man. one. But he's a legend in himself, so we definitely had to interview him, too, man. So, again, man, shout out to Mayweather. May, how do I say it? Mayweather? Oh, yeah, Mayweather. Mayweather's oh, finest, man. Shout out to Mayweather's finest, man. Coming in and shout out. Real, real. I don't know, man. A real, real. note. The real one. Say that. <laughs>